Scott, thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure. Uh, what sort of investor interest are you seeing in renewables and clean energy? We're seeing interest from a variety of different investors, and it's an interesting mix. We're seeing interest on the yield side because these are long-lived assets and produce a very consistent yield. Those investors tend to be long-term strategics or insurance companies. We're seeing investors on the behalf of college endowments, state pension funds, and that's a mix of, they like the yield profile, the return profile, they like the growth of the sector, uh, but they also like the, the impact side of it as well, even though that's not a core rationale for their decision making. And then we have some family offices and college endowments who have specific impact allocations who really like the impact aspect of renewable energy. So it's a, it's a nice mix. I would say more than 50% of our capital now is coming from those who are just looking for return and yield. But the, the, part, the, the number of investors looking for impact continues to grow. What does private equity bring to this sector that you think other investment vehicles might not? Well, private equity is important to the sector for a couple of different reasons. Um, it's very challenging for public vehicles to invest in these heavily asset intensive businesses because the depreciation schedules on a gap accounting basis depress the gap net income. So even though the, the assets produce consistent cash flows from a gap income point of view, they're challenging to invest in, which makes public market investing difficult and challenging. So private equity really plays an outsized role in renewable energy to provide capital for ongoing build out of the sector. Okay. So within clean energy, we have wind, solar, geothermal, biomass, many sectors. Um, which of those sectors do you think offers the best investment potential? Well, there are various ways of looking at it from a risk and return point of view. There are a few sectors that I, uh, that I believe are challenging from a risk point of view. Geothermal is one of those. Hydro assets are largely built out. Um, from a, from a return point of view, wind and solar both provide attractive risk-adjusted returns. We focus on private credit associated with these, with these assets, and solar provides more diversification potential than wind does from a credit point of view. They're smaller assets, easier to get multiple assets backing a single pool of collateral, better diversification of that collateral pool, and therefore lower risk associated with the investment. Okay. So we're coming up on just about a year since the administration announced their intention to leave the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, in light of that, what do you think the future is for renewables and clean energy in the U.S.? Well, it's been, it's been a very interesting year. Um, there have been a number of pullbacks on, from, climate, uh, from Paris Climate Accords, from the EPA, Clean Power Plan, a variety of things that have been retrenched. Uh, but it's had very minimal impact on the growth of the sector. Growth has been consistently above 15% a year since 2010, and we haven't seen any change in that over the last year. And there are a couple of different reasons. Most renewable energy policy, or most energy policy on the power side in the U.S. is set at the state level, not at the federal level. So changes at the federal level have very little impact. And we've seen drivers uh, of public policy coming from strong public opinion and strong corporate demand for renewable energy that is grown consistently over the last over the past year. We're also just seeing fundamental economics continue to drive the, the industry and right now solar and wind are cheaper than natural gas from a, from a consistent long-term cost of energy point of view. Okay. So uh, if the U.S. is to leave the agreement, it'll take some time to do that. Um, mm. What's been the effect so far on investor sentiment? It sounds like it hasn't been. It hasn't too been much. significant once they look at what the actual impact has been. There are a few. It, it did cause investors to pull back and say, "Is there going to be a significant policy change here?" And until they understood that federal government really has very little impact on power policy, and uh, saw the dramatic continuing decline of costs associated with these technologies that are really driving from a fundamental economic point of view the growth of the industry, I think the, the investor concern went away. Okay. Looking ahead, what do you see as the biggest risks to clean energy and renewable development in the U.S.? You know, I think like any uh, capital intensive business, interest rate risks are, are a concern that we always look at. You know, fortunately, um, these, the, the new assets are being reset from a power purchase point of view every time they are built uh, and installed, and, and it's easy to lock in interest rates on a long-term basis for these long live power purchase agreements. So that ameliorates um, much of the concern around interest rates, but it's, a, but it's an ongoing thing that we look at. From a performance point of view, um, these assets are very stable. And so we don't, and there's no commodity risk exposure. And one of the things that, that people like about this from a risk point of view is you don't have the volatility associated with oil and gas prices in this sector. Okay. Well, Scott, thank you again for joining us. My pleasure.